So good evening and welcome to part 13 of um, Secrets of the Obvious, where I try and answer um, the questions you either email me or WhatsApp me or send me on Facebook or Facebook Messenger. Um, so again, just a disclaimer, this is just my viewpoint. Um, generally, there's a little bit of PG something or other language, sex, nudity and violence that comes through, but it's all meant in humor and it's really laughing at ourselves so let's start right away um this is a question that has come up a lot this week strange how they come in batches so i saw my sum i've summarized the questions and the question is what happens after awakening to self you know what can i expect from awakening, you know, what happens to me? What can I expect after awakening to self? What does everyday life look like to someone who has awoken to self? Now, be very, very, very careful here. The minute you start expecting um, some form of mystical experience, which we all have mystical experiences throughout our lives, and mystical experience simply means we can't explain it. It's a deep, profound, present awareness connection, a holy instant. Um, and we've all had them whilst we wouldn't be doing the course. And now there's an expectation that that euphoria of present awareness remains intensely so for the rest of our days. It doesn't. It's 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 not designed that way because at some stage... As I've mentioned before, our journey away from God was complete. Our journey to God is is now underway, and and many a course student and many other non-dualist um, or non-religious or even non-conscious uh, spiritual person is is achieving it anyway. It's a collective mind. The mind is awakening to self. And. Well, once that holy instant happens, once that awakening to self, which means the realization of our true essential, very essential nature, get rid of all the non-essentials, the essential nature of our true self, the mind which is awake, not the mind that is a dream, that that is dreaming, comes into your awareness and you become consciously aware because remember, you're still in consciousness. So there's an awareness coming through. Yes, there's a phase, there's a stage where it is almost euphoric because the ego body mind has no idea what to do with it. So it recedes into the background uh, and then tries to come out. But you've heard the saying, you know, unconsciously you chop wood, fetch water and feed the kittens. And when you are woken to self, you still chop wood, fetch water and feed the kittens. The only difference is you're not expecting anything from anyone. And you're not worrying about a future and you and uh, you're present while chopping wood and present while fetching water and present with the kit kittens it's just presence it's an all-pervading awareness of the presence in which we abide god's presence um the realization of our christ nature our christ mind which is peace joy and unconditional love which is the unconditional acceptance of what is while we embody mind so nothing really happens once we've awoken to self because nothing ever happened. You just, you really get in touch with that and it's completely knowing. There's, it's not an understanding. Um, knowing is a transcend, you transcend understanding into knowing um, and it's the knowing of our true, totally true essential nature. You realize that not a single thought is real other than when you're thinking unconditional, unconditional acceptance, when you realize all of it are fractures of yourself. The essence of all of it is the self. The appearance is just a projection, just an hallucination. The essence of all of it, the light with which you see is the reality, absolute reality. But while it appears in form, it is just dream content, content of our dreaming mind designed to disguise the essence of what we are, designed to capture our attention so we don't, we're not aware of the true essential nature that we are. It's a very gradual process. Yes, there have been some that have come through 
a Jesus at a very young age. Um, when he traveled to Egypt, he had that self-realization, that holy instant, and realized he is the holy son of God, as we all are. He realized he's a character in the dream. He realized his true essential nature, right-mindedness. Ramana Maharashi at the age of eight, Nim Karoli Baba at the age of 16. And there have been many a such person that has come into that full realization um, of our true essential nature. I, I came into that full realization of my true essential nature at a very young age. I was about 42. So um, <laughs> it all it all comes through at its scripted time in terms of the Holy Spirit's rewriting of our egoic script, the script that was written in terms of separation. Don't expect anything profound from it. The judgment goes, and it's a gradual process. The, the attack, attack thoughts are seen almost instantly. It requires a willingness, therefore a vigilance, for what is true and what is illusion. It is a decision not to judge. It's a decision not to attack. It's a decision not to get angry. Um, gradually, uh, as the Course explains in the characteristics of God's teachers, there's a gradual, um, and you, you already have a natural propensity in that direction, perhaps except for one, um, but there's a deep honesty that comes through, and, and, and even honesty is, 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 is gentle. Um, there's a tolerance, and tolerance meaning you accept what is, and you accept others as they are. You're not constantly trying to change others. There's a gentleness, but there's also you're also forthright. You're not just a walkover. Um, it's not about people pleasing. It's about bringing truth, bringing light into the situation. There's an all-pervading joy. There's a defenselessness. You hear the truth. Someone posts something. Someone says something, and you recognize it. You don't have to comment. Yes, it is true, and you correct 100%. You don't have to comment. You just recognize it. Someone writes a whole lot of nonsense. You just look and smile and simply do nothing because your spirit is holy, and that's the act, that's the activity of the Holy Spirit, to simply look and see and smile and simply do nothing because you know whatever's happening in this universe will deform. Thoughts in form isn't real. There's a generosity that comes through. And I'm not talking about giving money out. There's a generosity of giving of self. Yes, of course, you can also share physicality and, and money with others. But it's a genuine generosity, giving of self for free. And the one that most people then miss, and they have most of the others, but they miss the patience. It's like, I'm awake to self now. Why am I still here? You were scripted. You may still come back another 10 times because you were scripted another 10 times. But those next not next 10 times isn't going to seem like lifelong suffering because you'll already come through with an awakened awareness. There's a deep sense of faithfulness to all your brothers, not to select for you, not just to your mighty companions, not to your special love-hate relationships. It's a faithfulness to all, and it's a faithfulness to show up and pour yourself into all of it. And lastly, there's an open-mindedness because you realize the truth can be conveyed in many different ways. Um, you live consciously aware. There's an awareness that comes through. And when you abide in silent stillness, consciousness dissolves and it's just pure aware, awareness of awareness itself, aware of the all-pervading presence of our Christ self in God's mind. You're aware that peace is all-pervading. And you're not trying to make it peaceful for everybody else. You realize you're only here to awaken to self and share that awakening self with others. Everybody awakens at their own pace. You're not now in a hurry. You need to save the world. There's nothing to save. You simply save the origin of your primordial awareness. That's what you save. You bring it back into remembrance. You become a member of our true essential self. Always remember this. No single character awakens from the dream and leaves the dream, okay? Characters realize, self-realize, realize the awareness of awareness we are, the essential nature we are. They then stop projecting their identity into the world of form. If they were scripted another five times, so be it. If not, generally, it's at the last script, generally speaking. There are those who are called messengers 
in the world of illusion. These are fractured parts of ourselves that have chosen to keep returning as messengers. They come through to, to they're provocateurs. They come through to make, to bring correction, to bring another way of looking at it so that they correct the truth when people have found the truth, but they seem to steer off. Um, these are the mighty companions of the Lord God of our being. They they come through just to reinforce the message. They're a special tough kind of character. They come through because they don't suffer fools and the world cannot sway them. But don't worry about those. You'll find them. They're around. Okay. Um, and they're not holy and they're not uh, <laughs> they're not spiritual. They're just characters. They bring through the truth. And they often shake the tree, the, the, the tree of good and evil. They shake that tree properly. Uh, don't hang around waiting to awaken or something special to happen. Once you realize the essential nature of your true self, pour yourself back into the world. Don't become reclusive. Don't try and hide world, from the world. Don't detach from the world. You can't detach. All of it is in your mind. Be non-attached to all of it, realizing the interconnectedness between all of it is you. You are the interconnectedness because it's all in the mind. Um, it, it, there is a gentle, all-pervading awareness that comes through and the world doesn't trigger you anymore. If something happens in front of you, um, you'll jump into action and you'll act from a place of love. Um, you know, I'll give you an example Many years ago, I was taking a jog down the street and uh, one of the neighbors left their gate open. The dog came running out and um, took a took a bite at me and he got a really good clobber against the side of the head, you know. And uh, and funny enough, a couple of weeks back, the same dog got out of the gate and ran towards me. And I just pointed at him and said, no, 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 go back inside. And he just simply stopped, turned around, went back inside. That was it. So the aggression wasn't there anymore. You just realized, you know, he was just chasing something running. That's it. You know, it wasn't personal. It didn't personalize it. Why is the dog biting me? Why did the gate, the neighbors leave the gate open? It's no longer personal. Um, there's a self-knowing. And knowing is not knowledge of this world. It's a knowing of our essential nature. And it's all-pervading. And it's always present. And it's always been present. Once you awaken to self, you realize that, presence was always there it was always watching always observing silently and often guiding us but we weren't listening um, our true essential nature is all accepting it's not judging and when we start to judge or get angry you can hear it it's telling you not to go quiet okay so don't expect this wah you know and it's all going to dissolve realize jesus was the character jesus 2000 years ago was the first to awaken to self fully. And, and there have been many since then and, and less known people. But where is Jesus now? Is he now in the right mind as a character? Or is the character Jesus, any time we think of Jesus, it's a memory in our wrong mind. Now remember, how far can you see? You can see the furthest star. You can see the light from the origin of the Big Bang. Uh, eyes can see forever by because it's all in our mind um light is being reflected at billions of kilometers per hour back at us but it's all in our mind quantum is now proving it's all here now simultaneously happening now and so although jesus appeared to be here before us two thousand years ago the character jesus like you the character like me the character is in the dreaming mind here now all of it appearing linear but it's always here now and so what's the difference between a Jesus and a you? Just on the vertical, Jesus awoke to self appearing 2,000 years ago. But it's all of us awakening to self. And the character Jesus is now a memory in our mind, in our dreaming mind, wrong mind. The essence of what was Jesus has returned to the awake mind. And now is joined with the office of the Christ. It is, it is the Christ which is continually talking to us. It, Christ is the voice. It's the holy voice, the holy memory of God. And it's the essence of what you are too, calling you to be yourself knowingly. Like I've said before, you heard me say this. If Helen Schuchman was raised Jewish, she would have heard 
some Jewish Messiah name. If she was J raised Buddhist, she would have heard Buddha. If she was a Taoist, she would have heard Lao Tzu. You know, so it's it was a way that she could relate to a higher sense of self. Do not objectify the voice and turn the absolute into an abstract objectification because then you put a layer between self and self and self and self means that you then put a layer between you and god you're in god you've never left you know this now how many times do we need to repeat this so don't be impatient and if you say okay i've come i've come into awakening to self what do i do now pour yourself back in this world needs the light you know go and share it um, remember, it's a complete reunion at one moment self. All the fractures, all the sons of God in, in the dream return to the son of God, the extension of the love of God, one indivisible self, one indivisible Christ mind. All the dream characters disappear. It's just pure awareness, which is what God is, pure awareness, pure energy, Pure light, I use the word light. Light and truth are synonymous. Is it light as in physical light? I have no idea. It's just a nice reference. It's a it's a nice concession, in my opinion. And remember, thoughts no longer grab your attention and you see them. And you already don't have to investigate any further because you know there's no origin to thought. The only true thought is unconditional love thought, which in our experience is unconditional experience, unconditional acceptance. Remember, the body-mind is designed to capture us. The five senses are illusionary. And so if you're feeling stuff, it's filtering through it, but it's beyond feeling. Knowing, there's no, there's no feeling or any sense perception in knowing. It's just a, an awareness. An awareness has no quality other than joyful peace. Okay, I hope that clears it up for many of you. And don't be in a hurry. When you awaken to self, now your true journey with God begins, which means to truly bring the light. The light has come, and you become a, a bringer of the light to the rest of your fractured selves. Here's another one of those. Uh, next question. You seem to object against people use, people posting pictures of Jesus or their guru. Can you explain why? Yeah, sure. It's quite simple. If you keep... Now, first of all, the picture that this pretty boy Jesus picture that people keep posting, the variations of long hair, beard, blue eyes. First of all, that's not what Jesus looked like. That was a depiction of a Roman soldier who actually was a lover of, of um, I think it was one of the Caesars. And, and he, in actual fact, was a serious rapist. So that pretty boy that everybody keeps posting pictures of as Jesus was a rapist. He's not the real Jesus. No one. No one in this dream mind illusion knows what Jesus looked like. When people post pictures of Jesus and say they love Jesus, they've turned Christ into an objectification, an objectified body. And now you're posting pictures of your of your guru, of your what is it really? It's it's just egoic identity signaling. Look at me, I love Jesus. I belong to a special I love Jesus group or a course in miracles Jesus group. Yeah, this sounds hard. People, non, remember, this is non-dual. Not everybody's ready to hear this. You cannot love Jesus. Love is not a directional emotion. Love is not something I do. Love is what I am. I am is love. And the I am recognizes the I am in all our fractured selves. The love I am recognizes the love you are. So it was a wonderful teaching by Ma Meister Eckhart, 13th century Catholic mystic, um, who said, God, you are the love with which we love, which with which I love you. God is the love with which we love. So can't even love God. It's the recognition of our shared being, beingness, our shared essence. And so when we say things like, I love Jesus, what we're really saying is we're back in duality. I, this body, loves Jesus, this ascended deity, God. It's time to transcend this course of miracles, son of God. It's really trying to. Time to really be correct. Christ is the love with which we love. Christ is our right mind, aware of the awareness itself, aware the dream isn't real. If you keep putting pictures, you're objectifying. 
And if you're objectifying, you're separating. And if you're separating, you go straight back into duality. And if it ra rallies up all sorts of feelings and emotions, your five senses are egoic. It's trapped you. It's going to pull you straight back into dream content. Awareness is without any emotion, without any feeling, without any thought, without any sensation. It's pure sense awareness, makes sense awareness. You've got to get out of your wrong mind to make sense of it. Get out of your mind to make sense of self. So do I have a problem? You'll notice that I haven't criticized anyone. If someone posts a picture of Jesus. I don't go, why are you posting a picture of Jesus? If someone says, I love Jesus, I don't go and comment on their Facebook profile or on their blogs or on their Zooms or on their videos. I simply share my non-dual understanding. Am I right? I'm happy. <laughs> I could be wrong. My mother thinks I'm right. My mother's always right. I'm sharing with you a new perspective, a new way to look at it. Isn't it time to transcend the I and Jesus story? Christ, one indivisible self. Christ you are. Spirit, pure spirit. And God is holy and his extension is holy. And therefore, what are you? Holy Spirit. What is Holy Spirit? It's the essence energy which contains the memory of the essence energy. And what's the essence energy memory? God. The Christ we are, the extension of God. Do I have a problem with people posting? Post it. You want to post to put a picture of your dog and your cat and your guru? By all means. But if you're in the Course in Miracles community and now you keep still posting pictures of Jesus, then you haven't understood the lesson. I've just recently posted a, a talk of Ken's. A great talk. Complete non-duality. Even he says there's no Jesus. There's only Christ. So isn't a time, yes, a beginning student needs to hear Jesus holds your hand and walks you home. And Jesus is your big brother. And But the I am, you know, um, is that which we are. And Christ and you and self are one. One, indivisible self, holy son of God. Be thyself knowingly. Okay, hope that clears it up. By all means, post your pictures. Wear your I Love Jesus t-shirt. I'm not going to criticize you, but I'm going to speak my transcendence awareness truth. I'm not even going to talk concept. I don't teach what I understand. I teach what I've experienced directly. And even that's a concession because I can't experience anything. There's no I to realize anything. There's no I to experience anything. The little I, which I speak of now, there is, doesn't exist. It's just pure I. I am, and that goes silent. God is. Full stop. Okay, next one. Oh, yeah comes, uh, yeah comes. Uh, let's get back into the boxing ring. So this brother wrote to me and said, and I noticed he posted some stuff, and then he wrote to me and he said, there seems to be a split in the course community over an article written about David Hofmeister. What is your standpoint on this? Okay. You want the truth? The whole truth? And nothing but the truth? Yeah? You ready? You want a Luji Poo kick up the Uranus, ignites the Kundalini, and bursts open your third eye with beautiful fairy dust that comes out of the backside of a unicorn you want that you want to really you want luji to have a go here it is nothing happened nothing happened nothing's happening you're not even listening to me right now this is an ancient conversation long time over you've awoken to self you've never left your father's kingdom that's not what you want to hear you want me to hear you want to hear criticism you want me to take a side and say, David's an angel, the reincarnation of Meister Eckhart. I honestly think David Hofmeister is, is the reincarnation of uh, Meister Eckhart. I mean, if you listen to their teachings, they're incredibly similar, and especially the way they speak. I could be wrong, but, you know, it's a nice fantasy. I've told you before, I've met David. 
we shared a house together in Birmingham. David's doing what David knows best. David is dedicated to sharing the truth in the best way he knows how. Has David ever fucked up? I'm sure he has. As I have I ever fucked up? Often. Look, see there? Broken finger. Gonna go to operation tomorrow. <laughs> I'm gonna amputate off by the arm. Um do we make mistakes? Yeah. Is any course teacher perfect? No. Was Jesus perfect as a human being? Absolutely fucking lutely not. Oh, what has he just said? Hey, Jesus got super angry. One day he walked into the temple, just a brick building, and he said, that's my father's house. And he sat down and braided a, a whip and then went to town and overturned tables and got really angry and shouted at them. Was Jesus fully awake at that stage? Absolutely not, because if he was fully awake, he would have looked and smiled and simply done nothing. Jesus was in progress too, 2,000 years ago. And when they wanted to stone the prostitute, he stood up and said, ah, 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 ah. no, 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 no. That you guys who have never sinned throw the first stone. He stepped in. He stepped in. He, And then he pulled her aside and said, hey, bitch, don't go and sin anymore. Did he call her a bitch? I don't know. Sounds cool. He said, hey, don't go sin anymore. And then he spanked her on the bottom. <laughs> we make up all these wonderful stories. Now, let's say, for example, let's use an analogy that people go and stay in David's monastery. Call it a monastery. And now they've sold everything they have and they've given all their money to David. And then... They're no longer welcome there two weeks later or three months later, whatever the case is. I have no idea what goes, went on there. I haven't bothered with the articles. I haven't bothered looking. And if you're wondering what really happened and now you want to go and investigate, realize that's your ego wanting to get dirt and find drama and pick a side. Don't pick a side above the battlefield, holy son of God. But let's say that that's what people did. Why have they done that? Because they want to escape their everyday problems, move to a monastery and get someone else to feed them. How are they going to feed you? Where's their income coming from? You've got to contribute. And let's say they gave up all their money and now they've been asked to leave. Well, realize that was their lesson. Got nothing to do with you. Nothing. Why are you getting involved? Do you want to bring righteousness in? Do you want to bring judgment in? Do you want to bring correction in? Into something that never happened. Realize that the world is an outer reflection in a condition. People are going to experience what they're going to experience. Let's say people, you, you're hearing articles that people went to David's place and they feel themselves unfairly treated. Were you there? Were they unfairly treated because they wanted more of David's time and David wasn't able to give him more time because he's busy and now they're unfairly treated. People feel unfairly treated by me. They send me hundreds of e emails and SMSs and I don't respond to shit, especially the relationship stuff. Not a counselor, not a psychotherapist. I've said that before. There's enough psychotherapists out there. Go pay your money. Go and do your psychotherapy somewhere else. I'm yet to bring non-dual truth in, not heal your relationship shit. Hey, I'm single. You know, I'm not married. I've got no kids. Don't ask me relationship stuff. I, I don't know. The closest relationship I have is with my three cats. It's easy. I just put food out and boot them out the front door and they misbehave. It's a joke. I don't boot them. I just grab them by the scruff of the neck and chuck them out. Okay, so... So who, whatever they were feeling and whatever they needed to learn, they projected and they experienced. Who are you to judge? And how do you know that when they're complaining about the teacher, their, their complaints are actually unfounded because it's unfair. They're asking for attention which cannot be given to them. Don't get trapped in did he or didn't he do anything. David's being David and these mighty companions are being the mighty minions, they're doing what they need to do. And are all of them perfectly holy? Of course not. If they were, they wouldn't be there. They'd be awakened to self. Now, Ken Wapnick was very clear in his teachings, and the Course is very clear in his teachings. Don't now start creating groups and, and societies and cults, and don't turn this into a cult. Now there's a place for a play, a place where you know for a space where people can go and really meet like-minded people. 
that if you think you're going to run away from the world and join a monastery, then you're no different to the Christ Christians, Catholic priests, people that just can't cope with the world anymore. And they join they join the church and they go hide in the monastery and pray all day long and then drink wine and then fiddle with someone because they're always going to fiddle with something. Yeah. So be careful of your judgments because you're going to get trapped in the judgment. This course was meant to be a, a, done on your own. What am I speaking for? I'm sharing my non-dual understanding. Why do I do this? Am I trying to convert you? There's nothing I can convert you to. I'm sharing my understanding. I share because that's the way I remember. I share to reinforce my remembering. I need to do this for me. There's no income from this. And as I've said before, I'm not pushing and promoting my books on you. Read my books if you want to. I don't suggest you do. If you have the Course in Miracles, you shouldn't read any other book. And anyway, all the money I make from my books and have ever made from my books go straight to charity. And if you need proof, I'll show that to you. So, charity animals. So, don't get trapped in the did he, didn't he, et cetera, et cetera. People are going to experience what they're going to experience. And if you now start using false compassion, empathy, false compassion, empathy, because you now empathize with the victim, well, then you see the world as a victim. Then you think of yourself as unfairly treated. Then you see people that you think are being unfairly treated. Remember, the justice of God is always happening. People are going to experience outwardly and inwardly the reflection of what's in their dreaming mind, their judgment. Whether they see it outward or it's an inner sensation, they're going to experience their separation, sin, fear, guilt, judgment. And... I mean, even Ken, like I said, even Ken says, don't, don't create cults, which is strange because then Ken set up the foundation. So on the one side, he says, don't. And then on the other hand, he set up the foundation. But had he not set up the foundation, I certainly wouldn't be aware of the course. Perhaps it would have taken longer to make its way around for those who are ready for Christian mysticism, which is really just logic, just pure logic, pure transcendence awareness. So, of course, the course community is, you know, split. When when did the course community split? The minute two people read the book. That's it. The minute two people read the book, there was a split. Why? Because no two people, no two fractured minds are going to see and understand the illusion and the transcendence thereof in exactly the same way. So, the 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 bull and can agree on everything? Probably not. So the minute there were two readers of the course, it was split. I teach something, the minute two people read my book, it's no longer the same understanding. Holy Son of God, above the battlefield, no judgment. And don't now start attacking David or whoever. Whoever wrote the article needed to experience what he needed to experience. If he's out there to find fault, he'll find fault. Be true to self. Deal with directly what's in front of your screen. Don't go look at other people's screens and then get upset about their movies. What's in front of you? Pour yourself passionately into your dreaming mind, your dream world. Bring your bring the light of awareness because you've ascended into the light. Bring it now and share it. You, you haven't brought the light to the dream. You've ascended into the light and now you share it. You ascend into it. You then call it down and you share it. Be that knowingly. Let David do David and let the authors do the authors and let the critics do the critics. But I see this. Course in Miracles students, what I find most of them haven't got a cooking clue about non-duality. They don't really understand the course. They take their Christian duality principles and try and shoehorn it into the course. And they still speak about it from that position. They haven't understood the transcendence principle, atonement. They haven't understood the, our only function is forgiveness. And while you're in body mind, your role is pure forgiveness. That's it. Be that knowingly. Be yourself knowingly. Okay. No more questions on David and and um, Ken Wapnick. I'm only going to answer course related 
understanding questions. You're struggling with understanding, understanding. You're struggling with the concept. That's what this is for. Here's the next great question. Great question. How do I know when to be quiet and when to speak? Should I correct others or should I let them continue to suffer the indignation of their errors in our dream of separation? Yes, someone that gets it in this language, what you've just written here means you really get it. So when when do I know when I should be quiet? All the time. Always be quiet. Unless you're asked for guidance or advice, don't add vices, but guidance. And then always remember, you'll always attract those into your space who are trying to transcend the lessons you've just been through. So then share through your direct experience. You can share your story with a deeper understanding. Bring through them the, the clarity of the understanding. Don't just tell a story and don't go and tell your story of suffering. You'll notice a lot of people ask a question only to pour out their suffering story. They need to be validated for their suffering. If you really want to be a teacher for God, you don't need to be validated for your suffering. You don't have to keep telling your story about when your mommy dropped you on your head and your daddy forgot to you at school and your mommy was a drug addict and your daddy was a porn star and you just haven't gotten over yourself. That's just attention seeking. Use your story to, to show others that if you could transcend, they can too. Never give advice. There's enough vices in the world. Don't add vice. Okay. Share by example. And and when you're hearing people comment on Facebook, on whatever social media put, if you have nothing nice to say, be still and know I am God. Be quiet and know I am God. And if you still haven't understood that, it means Luigi style, shut the fuck up. You get it? You prefer that? The be still and know I am God is not strong enough for you? Okay, shut the fuck up. Blah, 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 blah. Storytelling, storytelling. And most often, the only reason we actually meet with other people is we can't wait for them to keep quiet so we can tell our portion. We only listen to speak. Be still and know I am. Then if you're really compelled to share your knowing, share your truth and your perception thereof or your understanding thereof or your transcendence thereof, then by all means, post it, blog, et cetera, et cetera. If you have nothing nice to say and you can't think of a nice way to say it, there's a thousand Course in Miracles. There's 669 pages of text that you can quote or 356 lessons you can quote. There's so much you can quote if you don't have your own words. And remember, the fool quotes everybody else. The master quotes the wisdom of the master's. The sage shares his understanding. Remember that. The best way is to use your own words to convey through your, your direct experience the transcendence of understanding into knowing, the love of God, the peace of God, which transcends understanding into the knowing of your true Christ self. Share that. And, it's, and don't forget, if you have nothing nice to say, be quiet. I posted something today. A Facebook page is like someone's home. If they write something you don't like, be quiet. Put a smiley face or say nothing. If you go there and write stupid stuff and act like a twat, then don't be surprised you don't invite it back to their home, which means in this day and age, just block you. It's like get rid of an attack thought. No, no, you want them to still let you in so you can abuse them anymore. I don't allow abuse on my Facebook page. You write something stupid and you abuse me, you get a warning. You do it again, you're gone. I forgive and I forget you. Do you disagree? I don't give a fuck. I don't care if you disagree. It's my way. I've got to follow my way. You know what the course says? The course says fuck all about Facebook. Fuck all. <laughs> so be true to self. And if there's no guilt, then you're doing it from a defenseless place anyway. But mostly be quiet unless you have something kind and gentle and compassionate and encouraging to say. And you want to correct everybody. Do you know everything? Do you not use toilet paper anymore? Is your life perfect? Holy Son of God, 
reflections of yourself everywhere. If you're feeling judged and attacked, it's because you're judging and, and you're attacking. Hope that clears it up. Oh, one more thing. Realize that, yes, our Christ mind is limitless. But while we appear as characters in our dreaming mind, even if we get to that transcendence, holy instant, awakening to self, while we're in body mind, we're still limited by the limitations of the dreaming mind. Yes, you may get to the highest self awareness in the dreaming mind, but pure transcendence is that final holy instant when you put this body down and the essence of you, the life spark, the life force, soul, spirit, the essence returns to Christ's mind. Until then, you're still on a string. Okay, I'm going to pause there and, and then do some more questions. Okay, the next question is quite a long one. It came through today. Um, so she says, I've been a course student since 2009 and at times become wary at the never-ending forgiveness in the seeming life experience I've chosen to have. Um, a few weeks back, you answered a woman's question with an answer that as she does her healing work, her son will heal as well. With all my years of healing work, that continues, of course. Why is it my younger son, I have two, still blames his parents, I'm assuming blames you, for ruining his life by divorcing when he was the age of 10? And he's foul mouthed to us un un incessantly through messages, has destroyed his own life with drugs, alcohol, the former not anymore, has been told he has liver disease, can't keep a job, and refuses any extension of emotional help and support many of us in the family have offered, and is now on the verge of possibly being homeless. This has been one of my biggest forgiveness experiences in my life, and I wonder why if I'm doing my forgiveness work, why is he not showing even small steps towards healing? I am constantly needing to remind myself his healing is not my responsibility. Keep reminding yourself of that. His healing is not your responsibility. And to see him as the truth of who he is, Christ's self, we all Christ. But watching him spiral down, wondering when he'll hit bottom is emotionally challenging. He goes, caught you. Can you please shed some light on this for me from your perspective and gratitude? Okay, so you know this. We all come here to awaken to self. If you think that you are yet to fix other people, including those, of course, who you're emotionally bound to because they're family, egos trapped you through family members. Your son's journey, the fractured part of yourself that appears as your son, is completely his own journey. We all know that where two are gathered or two or three are gathered in my name, there I shall be also. So forgiveness work accelerates into healing when two people or three people or a group together choose that. If one of you do it and the other doesn't, that other person is going to get to that point of, of, of complete breakdown. They need to get to that place of there must be another way. And so by constantly helping them, you're not giving them tough love, which is unconditional love, allowing them to have their own experience. You cannot change his or anyone else's life. You can show up and share as long as you're not being a doormat. And at some stage, you need to, you need to define the rules of engagement, what psychologists call boundaries. We're not creating boundaries. Now. We're calling rules of engagement. This is how we work together. And if you cannot behave yourself in my awareness space, then I'm going to forgive and forget you. Now, of course, as a parent, it's very difficult. But the only way to help them is to really get them to get to a point where they want help, where they're willing to help themselves. And you could be supportive as a family member, but he needs to seek help outside. He needs to find help from a support group or a group of like-minded people that have been through what he's been through and understand the depth of his suffering. 
Now, if he's going to be projecting at you the pain because you divorced, are you sure that you have completely 100% gotten rid of that guilt? Because if you're still carrying guilt for having divorced when he was 10 years old, he's going to reflect it back at you. Realize you needed to do what you needed to do because you needed to get to where you, where you are now. And so it was scripted. You didn't have a choice. It was scripted. And so forgive yourself. Let go. And it won't be reflected back at you. But most importantly, if you have an expectation of what he's supposed to be because you've healed, it's like saying, I've healed and the whole world is perfect. You have no, no say at all over the rest of what your fractured selves do. None. Each one is responsible for our own at one minute. And it's our willingness as fractures to recognize our shared self that brings us into the awareness of the shared self we are, the Christ mind we are, the Christ, the extension of God we are. Always remember, you're not here to fix or change the world or heal the world. You're here to get rid of the obstacles to peace, the filters, the, the egoic projections that prevent you from recognizing our true shared self. If your five senses are still playing, sight, hearing, smell, taste, sensory, emotion, feel, touch, then egoic is playing through you. The ego is playing through your filters. Step into silent stillness. Now, when you're in abidance and prayer, abidance is prayer. You're not asking for anything. You're just in gratitude. Show me another way to see this. And gratitude for the experiences that have brought you to this transcendence awareness. Now, if you want to accelerate the healing, gratitude. For what? For being. For knowing. For the recognition. For the willingness that you've been showing another, shown another way. Now, if you can be in gratitude, it accelerates it. Then when you get attack thoughts, you simply don't observe. You just don't pay attention. And so if someone's spewing abuse at you and you really truly love them unconditionally, which means you accept them as they are and you have no expectations for them. And you just say simply no. And if you bring yourself your joyous peace into any place, those that aren't willing to share with the joyous peace you are will move away disappear, self-destruct, or see a reflection of themselves, which inspires them to step up, to step out above the battlefield, seek for help, and choose another way. When you truly take full responsibility for self and pour yourself lovingly, non-judgmentally, total acceptance of what is, watch the room around you change. But if you've got that much attachment to an outcome, that much expectation to an outcome. If you're looking for gratitude, if you're looking for acknowledgement, you're going to be you're going to be pulled straight back into the spiral because expectation is the mother of all egoic fuck ups. <laughs> Couldn't resist that. So no expectation for yourself lovingly, and when attack thoughts come, no thanks. N no, no. Don't project your shit onto me. I'm not willing to accept it. You chose me as a parent. You chose this experience. And your mess of your life has got nothing to do with what I did. You're using my life as an excuse to validate your giving up on. I'm not responsible for the decisions you made. I, I shared with you what I could. I did the best I could as a parent. Now it's up to you. It's that old saying, um, I'm an alcoholic because my father was, or I'm not an alcoholic because my father was. The decision is yours. You're not a dog. You don't get beaten with a stick and then you don't bark anymore. You can transcend any illusion, any suffering, any attack thought in this dream, dream time. Be thyself knowingly, holy son of God. It's now really time for this course community to transcend into the non-dual realization. Out, the world is an outer reflection of an inner condition. Not just my fractured body, mind, apparitions in a condition. It's a collective dreaming mind. The mind is, con the dreaming mind is constantly uh, broadcasting thoughts of separation, abandonment, rejection, unworthiness, not good enough. You did something wrong. You sinned. And therefore fear of being punished, guilt. 
So those seven degrees of separation, abide, gratitude, extend the love of God you are, Holy Son of God. You've got this. Let's pause and take another. <laughs> 